Back to verbs, uh, this would be the ninth section, and now I'm going, you should take an entire page for this. If you're taking notes, as I've continually said, you really should do. If you're taking this class, you should be taking your notes, uh, taking notes. This should take a whole page, and because it's a big chart. Uh, it's called a conjugation. This is a paradigm for organizing information about verbs. Well, actually, in English, verbs are fairly simple. And you don't really need a conjugation in English. At least English speakers don't. And so probably most English-speaking students never run into a conjugation unless they uh, study a foreign language like Latin or, well, any, almost any foreign language. Anyway, uh, I've chosen the most interesting verb in the English language, and that is the verb to be, conjugation of the verb to be, because at least that one you might be able to imagine the value of a conjugation. I suppose, in a way, more than anything else, I want you to understand what a conjugation is, so that when we, when you go on to study foreign language, you, you've seen it. It's, English is nice because you speak English. All right, you set up two columns. There's singular and plural. That will make a verb inflect, change, change its ending. Uh, then you, uh, you set up six, uh, ultimately, six tenses. I've been a little, I collapsed this because my board is smaller than your paper. Uh, but under the present tense, there you should set up three categories. There's the first person, the second person, and the third person. Uh, and in the conjugation, I'm putting the uh, pronouns there. In uh, Latin, for example, you don't need to put the pronouns there because the ending of the verb tells you the pronoun, but that, that's another story. Uh, so this is not only the verb to be, am, as an example but it's got the first person singular uh, pronoun I together with it. So in the present tense, we've got I am. Uh, you go to the second person, well, that's you. Well, it changes. Uh, you are. This is not are, this is you are, present tense. Uh, 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 you get to the third person over there, only one, he, she, or it is. I hear the four-wheeler, it may pull into here, in which case I'll stop if it pulls in. Uh, but anyway, until that, that happens, I won't stop. Uh, is, now look, am and is, they share no letters. This is the verb to be. There are no letters shared at all. How is this? Well, this is an irregular verb. This is an interesting verb. If you stay in the present tense now, and it's first person, but it's plural. Now you've got we, but it's not we am. Uh -uh, it changes to we were. You were. If it's yuns, as in dialect here, we would say yuns were. Yuns were there. Uh, that's plural. It's still were. And they, gender has now disappeared, and it's become just the pronoun, plural pronoun, third person, they, they were. All right, that's the first present tense. Past tense. Yesterday, I was, okay, Sing, first person singular, I was, you, you was, no, no, you were, it's got to change. He, she, or it, it was there. Well, that goes back to that, who would predict it? Language is not, often is not that predictable, especially when you get into irregular verbs. And remember, I've chosen the most irregular verb in the English language. So many other languages have many, many irregular verbs. You go to the plural side, not I, but we. We was there. No, no, we were. Yuns were, you were, yuns were, they were, it stays the same. Go to the future. Well, there's a couple ways to say that in English. You can say, let's start with I. I will be, you will be, he will be. It stays the same the whole way through, so I just said, etc. Uh, we will be, they will be. Yuns will be. Um, you could say, uh, I am going to be. Well, if you did that, I guess it would be, you are going to be. That's, you are going to be sorry if you don't study. Uh, uh, he is going to be. Well, that, see, that's going to change because, well, yeah, hopefully some of this you can just figure out. But anyway, uh, there, are, there are, you can say, will, shall, or going to. Uh, uh, be going to in, in English to get the future. Uh, the present perfect uh, is going to be, that's the present, 
That's the future. The present perfect is I have been. I have been. Uh, you have been. He has been. Or he, she, or it has been. I've been sort of sloppy here. Uh, oh, and I'm really sloppy, but I'm going to let it go anyway. Just listen to what I say. You get into the plural side. Pre uh, we have been. You have been. They have been. That's called the present perfect. It uses the verb to have, to form it, a helping verb. The past perfect. That's the one I left out here. The past perfect is going to say had. I had been. You had been. He had been. You see, the helping verb to have is in the past tense. I'll tell you what, in the next video, I'll try to explain to you in a little bit of a chart what's going on with these tenses. Right now, I just want to show you the con conjugation. And finally, the future perfect. Uh, tomorrow, I will have been... Uh, I will have been in Pennsylvania for one more day than I am today. Hasn't happened yet, it's going to be tomorrow, but when tomorrow comes along, I will have been here. Uh, yes, uh, you will have been. That's all going to be the same. They will have been, he will have been. All right, there are the six tenses, and if you've listened to me and you're careful, you could set this up as a very pretty chart. Uh, I have not done so because the board is a little small. Finally, at the bottom of a, a conjugation, it's good to list the principal parts. Sometimes you, you think, well, there's five or three. For English, three is, is what you really want to have. If you know the principal parts of a verb, you basically have that verb under control. Uh, and it's, it's going to have the present, the past, and the past particle. So when I said a verb, oh, does it pass the test? Today I blank, yesterday I blank, I have blank. Today I am, yesterday I was, I have been. This is a verb. This is a very unusual verb. Today I sing, yesterday I sang, I have sung. Sing, sang, sung. There you've got three of the principal parts, and those are the ones you really need in English. The present participle in English is so simple, you just said ing, singing, being. The infinitive, completely regular, you just put two in front of it, to be, to sing. So these are usually just left out. Uh, on the part of students of English. These are the three you need. And the past participles become quite important. Uh, today I dragged, yesterday I dragged, I have dragged. A lot of people want to say drag, yesterday I drug, I've drug. Well, that's, in dialect, that's what a hunter would say about the deer he brings out of the woods, but that would be regarded as substandard English uh, in many circles. And it's tricky. You say, sing, sang, sung. Uh, uh, bring, brang, brung? No, no. Ring, rang, rung. Yeah, that's okay, but bring, brought, brought. Yeah, that, that's completely different. Think, thank, thunk? No, no, no. It's think, thought, thought. Today I think, yesterday I thought, I have thought. It's a tricky business. But anyway, at least I've shown them to you now in kind of a hurry, but that's the way I am. I have one more video today. We're going to the chronological survey. So, um, see you soon.